About Aya. Sydney says, Father Simon, I've held a number of careers in my time, but the one which continues to trouble me was that of an officer of HM Customs and Excise. This role gave me carte blanche to act as a god amongst men, <laughs> to humble the mighty and belittle the many, and it is now time for me to make recompense to a small bunch of hard-working, honest and innocent people. I worked in a team specialising in searching cargo ships looking for hidden contraband, with our main interest being cigarettes. We prided ourselves in knowing just where to look, who to suspect, who the weak link in the crew was, and how to apply enough pressure to make him or her rat on his crewmates. Wow, I like this. This is a movie! Yeah. Our team leader, Captain Relentless, we called him, (laughs) was a ruthless man who took more delight than... Uh, who took no more delight than when claiming the glory for our haul of cigarettes and booze, usually after several hours of uncompensated overtime. Meanwhile, his second-in-command strove desperately to match the captain's unfettered drive, but in so doing fell woefully short in the popularity stakes. I should call this man Brian, and it's his attempt for glory which led to the events for which I have to confess. They took place at a commercial port somewhere in Wales, and our captain had dispatched us earlier in the day to a neighbouring city and port. As we loaded our search gear that morning into the hire car, he berated us with figures. There are five million cigarettes sold illegally each day, he said. There are scores of pubs going out of business each day due to cheap contraband. There are eight ships in harbour. You have to search them. And it's contraband, not contraband. So don't be annoying, Simon. (laughs) To top this off, he continued, you will not return with fewer than 20,000 cigarettes. You will not return with fewer than 100 litres of vodka. Only then will I, this is Brian speaking, (gasps) only then will I be satisfied that we are making headway in stamping out this heinous trade. Now cry havoc and let slip the dogs of customs. (laughs) Very good. That doesn't quite. Yeah, no, it works. Yeah. With this battle cry, five of us crowded into our hired car and headed off to fight the good fight. We finally arrived two and a half hours later and commenced searching our target vessels. And the method of target selection was quite extraordinary. Absolutely everything in port. That's what we searched. Some proved fruitless, whilst others offered up rich veins of tobacco and vodka, all of which were catalogued, concealed in bin bags and placed in the boot of our hire car. By late afternoon, we had seized what could be construed as standard consumption for a stag weekend in Benidorm and had reached Captain Relentless's target of 20,000 fags and 100 litres of vodka. Feeling buoyed by this and with the prospect of a good night out in the city ahead, we sped back along the motorway, arriving at the dock gates within 45 minutes. It was two and a half hours there and 45 minutes. Hmm. It was then that it all started to go wrong. Brian made no bones about wanting to beat Captain Relentless, and this was when he made his move. During our absence, a rather large vessel had tied up within the harbour, and Brian's demeanour and tone changed. Let's do him. (laughs) We need more cigs. But Brian, I whined. (laughs) Oh, this is good. It's five o'clock on a Friday. My plea fell on deaf ears as I drove towards the coal berth where this Bulgarian bulker was discharging. I noticed the trucks covered in coal dust, the road became black with dust, the sky became blacker still, and my thoughts of revenge blackened too. We dismounted our revenue steed and climbed onto the Bulgarian ship to commence an entirely needless search which would only stoke the fires of Brian's vainglorious attempt to outdo Captain Relentless. The minutes ticked by and six o'clock passed with only a paltry 200 Park Drive fags to show for our efforts. Park Drive, eight different times, ask your parents. (laughs) Brian, or look it up, Brian felt ebullient at exceeding the expected haul and called off the search. But my thoughts were darker than a goth's wardrobe. I would have revenge. As we departed, we gave our Bulgarian hosts a cheery wave and saddled up for the few hundred yards around the docks. It was then I made a suggestion. Brian, why don't you sit in the middle, in the back there? You'll be able to do your seizure paperwork on your knee and it'll be ready for Captain Relentless when we get back. Great idea, he says. That'll make me look all efficient-like. All strapped in our places, I left the coal berth and followed the lorries away from the dockside. Each of the lorries ahead of us slowed as they entered into a giant automatic wheel wash, where jets of high-pressure water were aimed to blast away the dust and grime. An escape lane led around the wash for those vehicles that didn't require it, but as I looked in the rearview mirror and noted that Brian had his head down scribbling away, I committed our car and our souls to the wheel wash, commenting... 
Bit warm, boys. Any chance of uh, opening the windows? <laughs> hey. This was the command for the two brave souls on the outboard rear seats to lower the windows and assume the brace position, with their heads tucked firmly between their ankles. Brian was completely lost in his notes when suddenly the car was hit simultaneously from both sides with what can only be described as a biblical force of water. The front side windows held, but the rear windows were, of course, not there. A blast of megaton proportions entered the vehicle and struck Brian port and starboard, his head only serving to act as a central bollard as the water <laughs> entering on the left exited from the right and that from the right exited on the left. Our car hire crept slowly through the wash. Brian sat stunned, his paperwork turned to papier-mâché, his colleagues helpless with laughter. The car's external condition was glistening and internally... Well, that's what I'd like to seek contrition for. However, I do not wish to seek forgiveness from my colleagues as they hooted as much as I did. I also don't wish to seek forgiveness from Captain Relentless for soaking his second in command. Neither do I wish to seek forgiveness from Brian, because, after all, someone's got to be the butt of this joke. No. I need forgiveness from the poor, innocent, hard-working hire car cleaners. See, he's ahead of you, Bobby. Who are... <laughs> who were faced with an interior that looked as if Captain Nemo had been at the helm and descended 20,000 leagues beneath the sea. I suppose the excuse I left the window open in the rain doesn't actually wash in this case. Well, Sydney executing his revenge spectacular stuff, because that sounds like not an ordinary car wash. That's not just your average squirt uh, with some sponges going round. That's, as he says, a megaton proportion, a biblical amount of water that's coming in. What do you say, Sister Bob? Well, this is really easy, but I'm just going to ask a couple of questions. Were they only looking for vodka? Was that the only spirit that people it appears to be, It appears to be... Just vodka, no vodka whiskey. Vodka and fags. No, no wine, no anything. Uh, and then also, uh, they needed a very big hire car, surely. A huge one to get all that stuff in. I was surprised. There's five of them and 100 bottles or 100 litres of vodka. That's a lot of glass and a lot of cigarettes. Yes. Uh, it's really easy, Sydney. You're not forgiven. Why? Because I once filled my car with water by parking it too close to the Thames. And the job entailed taking out the whole interior of the car Your to dry car it out. Yes, it's another in the story. River. No, it didn't. It was parked next to the river, but there's a tidal surge. But what I mean, what I'm getting to the point is that hire company would have had to remove the whole of the interior, and there would have been at least a couple of knife cuts in the carpet to get it all out. Because you can't dry a car out if it's full of water without taking it all out. All your fags and vodka—they must have. Well, been that was ruined. the least <laughs> of the problem. It was the hire. He wanted forgiveness for the car for the hire car workers. Absolutely not. Brother Matthew. Well, I mean, he'd, he'd have paid a deposit, won't he, on the hire car? So, you know, them's the rules. You pay your deposit and then lose your deposit when you decide to go through a car wash that fills your car with water. So I, I'm going to say forgiven because which of us could honestly say in the same situation we wouldn't have thought this will be hilarious. The person in the back doesn't know they're about to go through this massive car wash and get squirted on both sides by something that's there to remove coal dust. It would have been hilarious. All of us would have done it and for that reason let he who is, would not have done it uh, cast the first stone and, uh, and we would have all done it